So come and join me in the studio. I know you're going to absolutely love this. Happy Sunday! So this is the beautiful collage that I did last week and I just wanted to tell you that I hunted down the art shop that I bought this beautiful textured, very fibrous paper from. Um, this is the paper that I've put in here. See how it dissolves beautifully and it goes transparent and then you just see the fibrous pieces. It's glorious. Okay. It's called Agura Lace and it's a Japanese paper. And I had to do some fast talking to actually find where I got it from and what it was called. <laughs> because when I had ordered the papers, they didn't have one of them in and she sent me this one in place of it. So I had no idea what it's called. Now I know what it's called. Now you know what it's called. You can look it up. Google it, um, it'll be on Amazon, pretty sure, and you'll be able to find it and buy heaps, and it's amazing. They didn't have any more of this natural color in, but they had one sheet in black, so I said, yes, please, and it's coming my way, so I'm pretty sure you're going to see that. Last week, we did this beautiful collage spread. I used my uh, circle prints. I used some of Robin McClendon's uh, printables. And I used some beautiful textured papers. And I mentioned to you about the wallpaper. I have wallpaper samples that I absolutely love to use in collage. And this was the inspiration that started this particular journal page collage. So I got this wallpaper sample off cut from a lady who runs an interior furnishing business as well as a homeware shop and a cafe which is a fabulous place to go let me tell you and that's where I got that from I also from her got this piece of off cut I love wallpaper because it's just really thick uh, textured beautiful strong papers that makes fabulous collage so I also got this piece from her as well which I've used here see how good that goes with all the other collage elements. I absolutely love it. So besides using actual wallpaper in my collages, I've also found that they work fabulous for taking prints. This page here has a jelly prints on it that were um, taken from actual wallpaper impressions. So this week we're going to play with wallpaper on the gel plate, taking impressions, using them as texture plates and playing with this concept of wallpaper. So that's the wallpaper stuck on the page. That's actually an impression print taken from the jelly plate. Same with that one. This is actually a piece of wallpaper stuck on. Uh, yes, I love it. I do. It's fabulous. So here we go, let's make a mess, let's make some great art, and I can't wait to show you my love for wallpaper. So my love affair with using wallpaper in my collages and jelly printing was when I got this particular wallpaper sample book from a recycle center. It's a fabulous book full of, as you can see, full of wallpaper samples that obviously out of date, they don't make them anymore. And this sample book was just in the recycle center and I bought it for a few dollars. Don't think it was very much. I absolutely loved the patterns and the colors of the samples and I thought it would work really well in collage and mixed media, which it did. I did a few collages using the wallpaper in them and then I started to realize that there was other uses for these beautiful pages. Because what happened was I decided I needed a particular color for my collage and I wanted to use the wallpaper, but it wasn't the color that I wanted. So I thought, how about I put some paint on the gel plate, uh, put the beautiful textured wallpaper piece on the plate and paint it and then it will be all right for my collage, which is what I did. 
Uh, so I put this textured piece of wallpaper on the plate like this and thought, oh yes, it'll be beautiful. It'll get a lovely covering of paint and then it will work in my collage, get it nice and coated. And when I lifted it up and took it off, yes, it did get a beautiful coating of paint and it could have worked in my collage, but I'm like, oh my gosh, look at that. I was so excited and gobsmacked by the sheer beauty of the print that I'm like, oh, we have to play with that further. So that's how I started printing with the beautiful wallpaper samples and using them on the gel plate. So this is just white tissue. There is my beautiful wallpaper print and it turned out absolutely gorgeous. Now, that one's a bit light in color. You probably can't see the texture as much. So, you know, maybe that wasn't the best example, <laughs> but let's make some more. So I'm going to throw some paint on the gel plate and show you how really amazingly fabulous these wallpaper samples work for taking impressions on the plate. I don't know, do you call them texture plates or impression plates? I don't know, I don't really care. But whatever you want to call them, I use the same piece again because this time it might be better because the color's a bit darker and you can see it a bit more. But I'm telling you, baby, I fell in love with this technique the very moment I saw it. There are so many possibilities. Straight on, look at that. It gets a nice coating straight off and there it is. It's a script kind of text pattern on the wallpaper. Why you'd want that all over your wall, I don't know. But that's what's on there. And then it takes a beautiful print. Now I got the first book of samples from a recycle center. And then I thought, you know, there's probably other people that wanna get rid of these. Look at that beautiful textured absolutely gorgeous print that works really well in my collages. I'm like, yes, fabulous. So, and then after I was started using the one from the Recycle Center, I thought, well, there's probably other people that wanna get rid of these. So I went and asked at a home furnishings uh, shop, interior furnishings, I think it was called, something like that and said to them, have you got any wallpaper sample books that you don't want? Now, as it happened, they had had a flood and their sample books out the back were actually marked and soiled. So look at this one, uh, a page from the book I just showed you and I literally ripped it out and cut it in half. See all the beautiful texture on the page. It's like an embossed paper. Uh, wallpaper and it is fabulous uh, so their sample books were marked and soiled and they were very happy to sell them off for like dirt cheap and the sample books are really big and thick and full of all these papers some of the papers have been soiled and ruined by mold but some of them were amazing not all of them were embossed or look at that look at that it's amazing not all of them were embossed or textured like this one, but the other ones were beautiful patterns and textures that I could basically stick into the collages anyway. See, look, there it is. Gorgeous. You can really see this one. Yay. Uh, so it's really worth trying. Check out interior furnishings type shops and ask them if they've got sample books of wallpaper that they want to sell you and you just never know what you might find. Look at this, absolutely beautiful. It makes such incredibly gorgeous textured prints that I have been using quite a few times in my collages already. Absolutely love the wallpaper. 
And you can use these pieces over and over and over again. They come up beautifully. They mark really well. And it's incredible what you can actually find in the big pads of the wallpaper samples. Look at the beautiful ghost print. We'll have to run some paint over that and see if I can pull it that up. I do get in a bit of a creative frenzy when I'm jelly printing like this and I'll just put layer upon layer of paint and color and texture and then, you know, pull some absolutely crazy but beautiful prints. Highly experimental. <laughs> a little bit messy. <laughs> and so much fun now not all of the wallpaper um, is embossed and some of it even the embossed designs don't always work but i'm telling you it really is worth experimenting with and seeing what you can find so here's the ghost print that i just put a bronze over that's a very cheap brand of paint, the Reeves brand. I also have some Liquitex Basics, so that was what I put on first. And I have some Unbleached Titanium. Better show you the colours because I'm going to play with them. Copper, some Deep Matter, some Payne's Grey, and we'll just have a little play and pull some prints. Um, I think that's absolutely beautiful what the um, impression of the wallpaper leaves on the gel plate. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, depending on which section of the wallpaper you're using, you're gonna get different patterns. So that was the one that I just printed. And then of course, if I use this section or this half, the other half of the paper, uh, they're all different designs. So, you know, you get a lot of bang for your buck. I think it cost me 20 bucks to buy the sample book and there are so many pages in it and of course once you've finished you know printing like a crazy person oh is that just me <laughs> once you're finished printing like a crazy person you can actually use the beautiful wallpaper in your collage like I've showed you in my art journal book I have actually painted a, with a section of this and then stuck a piece of it into my one of my art journal pages and it looks fabulous so this section here is exactly a piece of this wallpaper exactly the same piece that I've um, painted in the bronze and stuck in there actually I would have taken lots of prints with it in bronze tones and then decided oh my gosh that's beautiful and cut it up and put it in my art journal collage so you know it's the gift that keeps on giving of course I have to pull out my favorite color golden iridescent bronze fine oh my gosh I love this color I'm using this one with the script writing on it. I put it on the plate, have a nice little rub, and voila, baby, it's just like magic. <laughs> just look at that, just like magic. There it is on the plate. I love it so much. Put a piece of white tissue. I like using white tissue because I put them in my collages then in multiple layers. And I just love that. I love having an abundance of papers ready to go for when I feel like putting collage together. They'll all be already printed in lovely piles, ready to say, use me. Look at that. Oh, look at that. That's flipping awesome. Look how well that printed. Um, now that is has got some of the previous texture from this one still on the plate and then a little bit of text script writing over the top i mean come on that's beautiful in any language oh so that is glorious i did put a very thick and healthy layer of paint onto the gel plate 
of the deep meta and the copper because I wanted to make it thick and chunky and glorious. Then I just put the fabulous wallpaper piece on it. And we're now taking the print. Look at that, that is just beautiful. You know, I could do this all day, but I guess I better show you something else. So if you're having a little bit of a cry because you can't find any wallpaper sample books, um, don't worry. <laughs> you can make your own impression plates or texture plates and it's really easy. So the last time I went to the framing shop where I pick up my D-ring and strings and tape, I asked them for some um, offcuts of the mat board. You know the board that you put around the artwork when you're framing it well they have all these middle bits that are like off cuts from creating the mat board that goes around the frame so I'm like have you got any off cuts and they're like for sure so I picked up a whole heap of these mat board off cuts um, all different sizes but you know small like this and they were happy to give them to me free so you know you don't know unless you ask so I came home with a whole heap of these mat boards and decided I was going to make my own texture plates or impression plates uh, because if it worked that well with the wallpaper, then why wouldn't it work that well with stencils? There's no reason. So I created this with a stencil and some modeling paste on a piece of mat board. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You can use any of your favorite stencils. This one's a Stencil Girl stencil. I like that one. We might print that and I'll show you. It's one of my favorites. I know, I know I say that for everything, but I only use my favorites. Now, I'm using a Liquitex modeling paste, but you can use any modeling paste. There's all different price points for modeling paste, but you know, whatever you have. Uh, whatever stencils you have. This one works really well. Love it. I forget what it is. Maybe a crafter's workshop. I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, I know this one's Tim Holtz because it says it on it. <laughs> so that one's really cool. I like the cross pattern design. That works really well. And this one is one of my new favorites. This is from PM Artist Studio. And I'm giving this one a really good run. To see how well it holds up it's a new one that i have and it's pretty cool so basically you know you put the stencil down you could use cardboard or card stock or you know the end page of a watercolor pad you could there's so many options of what you can use for the substrate but something that's going to be nice and stiff free mat board is pretty cool put the modeling paste on your stencil you don't have to be too you know precise and serious about it well I don't have to anyway and voila da -da! there it is absolutely beautiful I'm going to put two down because there's space to do that we might even you know turn it around let's go from this angle I know slap it on you don't have to be too precious and what we're doing is creating texture on the base board backing that you can use as a impression plate, especially if you can't find any wallpaper sample books. But you know, this is really cool too, because you can use your favorite stencils and then you get the design that you want. And it's really easy and you can use any texture plate paste that you already have. Don't worry about brands. Da -da! So look at that. Absolutely fabulous. Look at the texture on that. It's just glorious. It's just a layer of texture paste. It's beautiful. It looks really nice, just like white. But I'm going to let that dry and then we're going to take some prints. Right now, here is my beautiful text plate and i'm loving it it's gorgeous it's nice and dry and i can't wait to see how it prints now make sure you wash your stencil 
from the texture paste if you don't want to get it all stuck up with the medium. So give your stencil a nice wash, keep it happy so you can use it again. So let's run this through and see how we go. I'm going to use some Payne's Grey on the plate. There's still a bit of bronzy colour left from where I was printing the wallpaper samples and that's all fine. <laughs> I really don't mind. So I've got some beautiful Payne's Grey. Oh, what a glorious colour. On there, I'm going to put my fabulously newly dried texture plate on the gel plate. And let's see what this beautiful stencil print can do. I'm just giving it a bit of a rub all over it. I don't really want to push too hard. Indent my gel plate permanently. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That looks cool. I could use, I could just use that in my collage. But, but I will take the print. I know. I'm so dramatic. Let's see how this looks. You can see where the paint reached all those beautiful different marks. I love that. That's just beautiful. Oh, it's so endless what you can do with such incredibly simple techniques. It is absolutely endless. So this is fun. This is um, pulling up some of the colors that were already on the plate, some of the bronze, which I'm loving. Look at that. That's gorgeous. It's got a bit of the bronze still on the plate from when I was doing the wallpaper samples. And it's got the Payne's Grey. That is just fabulous. Love it. That will work really well in my collages. Oh my gosh, this is going to be endless possibilities of what you can do with a stencil, a piece of mat board, and a bit of paint. Baby, I tell you, it's endless. Now there is all of this fabulous, beautiful texture left on the ghost print. And if I was a patient person, I would wait for it to dry. <laughs> But I'm not a patient person, so I'm going to run over it with my fabulous, beautiful bronze fine and pull the print and see how much we can get off the plate. Look at it. It's just glorious. Yay. So I use all of these prints in my collages, either on canvas, on paper, or even just in my art journal. All of these beautiful jelly prints, I put them in a pile and then when I'm wanting to have a little frenzy of making collage, I pull them all out. It's absolutely fabulous. You can just spend hours creating these beautiful prints. There's no stress. You're not trying to really do anything other than have fun and make something beautiful. So it's a really great way to relax and unwind. <clears throat> this for me anyway. Look, we got most of that off the plate. Yay. And there it is. Look at that. It's only smudgy because I didn't wait for it to dry, but I'm all right with that because it's collage paper and I want to keep printing. That one worked beautiful. I love it. It's just a great... pattern so I'm going to try this other one this is a stencil girl stencil on this one uh, just remember it does have some of the background still on the plate because I'm not entirely cleaning it off and I don't mind because that will all kind of come through and eventually I'll pull a ghost print that'll be off oh, so amazing. That is going to be very pretty. This is such a simple way to create fabulous collage paper. And you can see here, 
on the uh, texture plate where the paint has touched the beautiful uh, surfaces from the stencil and the texture paste. It just works so well. Seriously, you gotta do this. So don't cry if you can't get the wallpaper samples, but have a try. Make sure you go ask some of the interior furnishing places if they've got any. And then if they don't, go home and make your own. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Look at that. That's just beautiful. Love it. So I did the same with this Tim Holtz stencil. I put it on a piece of mat board that I got from the framing shop and uh, it prints up fabulous absolutely fabulous so I'm just putting some Payne's grey on the plate because you know I like me a bit of drama and there's the texture plate that I've clearly already tried and I know that it works and it's all a bit of fun. Really, isn't that what it's about? Just a bit of fun. It's just another way to create cool prints to use in your artwork. And it's a fabulous way to spend a few hours in your studio, oh, enjoying the colors and the texture. I suppose it'll probably not be as, see how cool this looks? Oh, just love it, just love it. And so simple. Sometimes it gets a bit smudgy because I put on too much paint, but I'm okay because it creates really cool papers that I can then use later for something else. Or I can even create another layer over it. It's just another way of doing mark making and creating papers for glorious collage. right over the top of the ghost print and let's see what we create. So that's got a nice multitude of colors on the plate from the Payne's Grey of the first print and then I put some of the alizarin Crimson and a little bit of the bronze. Once you start getting uh, some layers on your plate and you're building up on your prints, they can just be absolutely amazing. It does take a few prints in to actually kind of get in the groove, get your plate warmed up and be creating something that you're really happy with. Look at that. That's really cool. It's really interesting. It's got some great shapes and some great texture on it and I really like it. So I'm going to try some with this stencil that I created this texture plate with and show you how great that one looks using a bit of the deep matter and the copper. Yes, I know, I love these rich warm tones. What can I say? I love it. You can of course put multiple layers on these prints, come back when they're dry, add another texture element on it. Oh. Possibilities are endless. Look at that, absolutely fabulous.
there we go just beautiful i think that's a crafters workshop stencil but oh, i'll have to do some more research to find out if i'm right or not <laughs> but that's just beautiful i absolutely love it so i'm gonna keep printing uh, i won't make you watch all of it and but i will show you uh, once I've finished printing and they're dry, I'll show you how amazing and beautiful they are to encourage you that this is a really easy technique. Uh, grab wallpaper samples if you have them. Use them for impression plates on your jelly printing or make your own with some board and some texture paste and a few stencils. I'm telling you, it's fantastic. They last for quite a while and the possibilities are endless. Right, so I kept making prints probably while you were sleeping <laughs> and everything now is dried. So I thought I'd show you some of these beautiful results. Now this one is from the Tim Holtz stencil and I know that it's a Tim Holtz stencil because it has his name on it. Uh, loving this one, beautiful. And then, of course, I love ghost prints. I love the subtleties of the design in this. I think it's absolutely fabulous. And, of course, depending on what colours you throw on the plate, I used all those ones I had out. And that's another beautiful one. These, this idea works really well for creating so many beautiful prints that you can use in your collage. Oh, there's that one too. Even when they go smudgy, they're still all right. They look absolutely fabulous. Now, this one is from a Stencil Girl stencil. I think it's called Patina and Lace. I love it. It's one of my favorites and I've used it quite a few times in my other videos, especially in my Skillshare classes. Um, this is the, the um, impression plate here. That's the beautiful pattern of it. It's a fabulous stencil, like I said. One of my faves. And it took some beautiful ghost prints. I love these kind of textures. That will make a fabulous background for a collage. And then, of course, I had to make some pretty ones because I love pretty colors. Look at the texture in that. I love it. And then that one is lavish with, that is actually the golden iridescent bronze fine that color so you know you need some of that i know i could go on and on for days but i won't keep you forever oh this is the impression plate from the wallpaper off cut from the sample pack oh love it absolutely love but that's the beautiful textured print that's come from that one absolutely love it it works really really well and it make fabulous backgrounds. This is the beautiful new stencils that I have from PM Artist Studio. This one here. I know it's getting a bit beat up. Sorry, P. I'm <laughs> definitely using it. It's fabulous. I used it as an impression plate to take these prints. Look at that. Yes, golden. Hello. Love that iridescent bronze. But then you can get some really beautiful moody tones with the Payne's Grey. Loving it. So, you know, you can just do so much. Oh, there it is there. There's the text. Look how cool that looks just by itself. Oh, I love that design. So cool. The um, This is also was the other wallpaper piece. Now, this is a scripting text, written script. Um, you might not be able to see that so well because I have covered it with paint. It, I love it. It works really well. Uh, you can probably see. Oh, look at that. That's got a beautiful kind of subtle uh, pattern and texture on that. Make a fabulous background. Again, you can see the, the script writing quite clear on this one. You see? It's endless. Endless possibilities. So, oh, this was the other one. That's the stencil. This is the impression plate. Straight onto a piece, yes, of off-cut, of matte board, straight there. Texture paste, too easy, lemon squeezy, so simple. But look at these beautiful prints. That one makes a particularly fabulous texture on the gel plate. Look at that, I just love it. Um, they're going to be fabulous. So now that I've got another 100 prints, <laughs> um, 
how about we put a you know quick and simple collage together nah nothing's i'm messing with you nothing's quick or simple because there's too many to choose from but let's put a collage together in my art journal book and i'm going to use some of these prints and it'll be fabulous okay so i have pulled out my art journal and i've surrounded myself with the prints that are most likely to succeed <laughs> in this today it all depends on how you feel in any one moment and today i'm loving the rich beautiful coppery gold bronze magenta warm tones i know right what a surprise um i like to use matte medium when i do my collage and this liquitex basic one is pretty good i have some baby wipes for my sticky hands a brush plate to put the matte medium on some scissors and somewhere is my steel ruler to rip the pages and we're ready to go now what i like to do is have a maybe a focal point or something that the rest of the collage can wrap itself around because these are a lot of textures and backgrounds and i've got so many of them i need to make a firm decision on where to start so i've pulled out this piece this half ripped circle piece actually came from this is the other half of the circle piece that was one i did the other day i'm loving it it's beautiful and i had this left on my studio table so i thought i'd use it because it works really well now this is the same stencil pattern that is in my impression plate so i have used the stencil straight onto a jelly print and i've gone over something that's already printed and i've printed the circle and this one has had as you can see quite a few layers so seeing as i have something that i can use for the focal point i'm going to start with this and then use some of the impression plates of the same stencil and maybe some of the other ones that match in as well that's the plan um i'm not really sure exactly how it's going to go i just really like this piece and i like this piece so other than that i'm really not sure exactly how we're going to go with this it's an intuitive approach i'm basically going to create it um, and make these decisions as we go along and it may or may not work but <laughs> it'll be fun i absolutely love it this is my personal favorite way of creating collage especially in an art journal people because there's no fear if it doesn't work i'll just create something over it or keep working on it until i'm happy there's no way that it can actually not work because i'll just create another layer until i am actually happy and it's an art journal there's no pressure i don't have to sell it i don't have to hang it or exhibit it and it really takes all the stress off this exercise is purely about creating enjoying the moment and having a fun afternoon in the studio i'm liking this this is working well over here i might put some of that over there and i might even pull out some of my wallpaper which started this whole pursuit so this has a cut and a torn edge from being used in a previous collage which i really don't mind i think it's okay now i've cut i've torn this piece off i love it i think it's beautiful it's going to go under there and i cut the edges of this piece although if i stick the whole thing on i'm not sure how much will be seen at the end because i'm not quite exactly sure uh, which pieces i'm going to use next um, i'm loving this i think the color looks fabulous and the pattern is great i'm also loving this piece i love that kind of it's almost looking aztec looking i think that should go on there so i think i'll do that next and then if i put that under there i'll glue those bits down and we'll well you know it didn't tear incredibly straight <laughs> but you can't let that kind of thing worry you <laughs> my tearing went a little skew if but that's okay these things happen look so i actually don't mind the shape because it's kind of going around the circle there what about 
something like that on there. Might be a bit much. I'm liking this, this, this line of my wonky tearing there. I'm liking that's a tiny weeny bit of the scripting on there. Can't really see it clearly, but it's got some smudgy colors, which I like. Yeah, that's gonna work. I think I'll just make it a bit smaller, but it's a little too big. So let's see how wonky I can make this tear. How about that? How about like that? I think that'll be okay. I'm liking that. I think that looks great. The colors are matching really well, of course, and the textures are just beautiful. So I think I'd like to add some drama of my beautiful uh, wallpaper sample piece that I have. I love this one. It's got the right tones in it and it's got the right texture patterns. So am I going to put a piece on it or in it? What shape am I gonna put? <laughs> What am I going to do with it? <laughs> I need to do something. I think it's fabulous. I think the colors and textures work well. But what? I can't just stick the whole thing on. Um, what about if we continue the circles and I cut some circle shapes with my, yay, circle cut. I like that like, edge there. That's pretty nice. I could put bronze on that. So what about if we cut some circle shapes? Out of that and let's see what that will give us do I want them evenly spread do I want them far apart you know I actually don't know what I want <laughs> but you know we'll work it out <laughs> all right so there's the holes which I love I love the holes and of course I love the pieces. Look at these. Hey, beautiful. Did I mention I love wallpaper samples? Okay, so we could put these on here. That's cool. Do we want, oh, that's nice. It's got a tiny bit of the texture. See how fabulous they look? Do we want three or do we want four? Maybe I want four. I usually put three, but you know, maybe I'll put four. Oh yeah, loving that. Loving that. And then what are we gonna use this? We have to use this piece because this piece is beautiful in itself. Um, it could go on this side. It could go there or it could go like that. Cut that or it could go, so yes. Hello, we have to do something with this. <laughs> We just have to decide what that something is going to be. But it's definitely going on there. <laughs> so I cut the top off the piece. So that helps me with my decision because it's a very hard one. I'm loving this edge here. Um, I'm loving the holes. But do I want the whole holes or do I just want to put half the holes on the page like that? Cut that off. Oh, man. <laughs> Do I, I love this paper. Do I want to have that? Do I want to, do I want to cut it? Do I want to tear it? Hmm. Righto. Make a decision. Make a decision. I'm going to start by tearing it. And then if the tear doesn't look any good, then I'll cut it. It is wallpaper, so it is quite thick. Uh, it's just fabulous, really. You really got to find yourself some wallpaper sample books. I mean, they're just glorious. So I tore around that line, which I liked. I don't mind 
it but I think I'll keep tearing because clearly that's covering too much of the page. So what about that shape? Oops. Yeah, I don't mind that shape. Although what I'd like to do is maybe I'll cut that, that circle off the top there. Make it only three circles. So I think I'm going to go with the four circles, but I want to put a little bronze around the edge so it's not so stark and it would just give it a little bit more of a glamorous feel because, you know, I do like a bit of glamour. So I'm just going to touch the edge here with the golden iridescent bronze fine. I really like this raggedy edge, the torn paper. Just want to give it a bit more of a beautiful, glamorous feel. Right, so while this piece is drying, I put the bronze along the edge here because um, I just liked it looking even more opulent than what it is. That's going to go on there. I'm going to have to trim the edge. That's okay. I've got to trim the top. That'll be fine. That looks pretty cool. Liking those colours underneath that beautiful piece of wallpaper. They're going to go there. I think I've decided, yes, I do like them. And I need something for there. So I've pulled out my little bag of scraps from last week and the week before. And I thought maybe I'll have a little fiddle with some scraps from my scrap bag. I don't mind that there. It kind of connects. That would oops, connect those two pages together better. What else have we got? Oh, I've got a little bit of Robin's scripting left over from her printables. That's kind of cool. Or else I've got some of the Nat Geo page or some of the circles. What else is in this bag? Well, um, some of this from a different collage. That could work too. That could go on there quite nicely. I'm thinking same stencil, right colours. It's even got circles in the background. So that could go on there. That connects that section. Mm. Oh, man. Decisions, decisions. <laughs> they could go good in there too. Oh, man. <laughs> do I want one? Do I want two? Oh, I don't mind that piece like that. Well, that one with the circles on it. Yeah, I don't mind that. That's kind of in line with those ones, which looks kind of cool. You know, you see how it goes a little bit by little bit and we'll get there in the end with something that I'm really happy with. I'm liking this Nat Geo paper edge too. That's pretty cool. That could possibly go somewhere. Maybe. Oh man, decisions, decisions. Well, I think I'll put my circles down because I'm pretty happy with these. They punched out really well considering it's um, wallpaper. I thought maybe it might have been too thick, but no. The blade was sharp enough and it punched out just fine. They look great, so I'll put those down. At least that's a decision I've made for <laughs> And then we'll go back to the other side. <laughs> kind of straight-ish. <laughs> right. <-o. laughs> Loving these textures. Well, it's all a bit dark at the moment. Maybe I should lighten it up with something. Yeah, I think that's too much. Too many sh cross shapes. I don't, nah, get rid of that. Now, what I love about having, um, I'm liking this piece. I'm going to stick that down. 
what I love about having bags of scrap is that you have these random pieces that come from different collages or different printings and I've just been throwing them into different bags mostly that um, more color so similar colors together so if I'm looking for particular colors I just grab certain scrap bags and I find that really helpful especially like now when I just want a something and I don't quite know what that something is the scrap bag might be helpful. I oh, don't, no, that's committed. <laughs> down, she's down, baby, she's down. Get that right in the edge there. That's committed. Perhaps we'll just commit to this one. I need to trim the top because I want the bottom there like that, but I can cut that off later. I might even go a bit higher. Yeah, cut that off. No, I like that. It's got to cover that color there. All right, that's how that's going to go. So I'm going to put that down. I like to use um, junk mail for when I want to glue something on that I don't want to get all over my table. So I will use, I will keep the junk mail that comes in the mail, like the real estate brochures and the supermarket catalogs. So I keep them and then I use them like this to splash matte medium all over so I don't get it in my working space. Yes, very good use of junk mail. Right, then you just chuck it away and your space is still all clean. I like keeping a semi-clean working space. Now, what did I say I liked? I want to have it so this color is in the full circle. And then I can trim it off at the top when it dries. Yeah, I like that. I like this line around here. I like the shape of it. Love the color and texture of it. Although I do probably might need to put some lighter something on it because it's all a bit dark. <laughs> Maybe that's how I am today. <laughs> Do you find that your collages or your work is different colours that you pull out on different days? I know, man. Something's a bit dark today. <laughs> There's all these sombre tones, man. It's all a bit serious. It's all just a bit serious. I need to pull something out and lighten it up. That's great. That's fabulous. Loving that. Beautiful wallpaper piece love it so i'll trim that off the top when it's dried and those colors look fabulous even if they are serious and somber <laughs> i'm gonna find something in my scrap bag to lighten it up <laughs> righto let's see what we've got in here oh, i can always use all that or that that's nice that's pretty that's pretty it's pretty, pretty, pretty. Or I've got some other. Hmm. What about my trusty, beautiful fibrous paper? That piece could work. Although then I cover my bronze. Oh, man. But it does lighten it up. And it does dissolve quite nicely. So I probably could do that. Righto. I'm going to do it. Now, this paper, I did just find out the name of it. This is a Japanese paper, a Gura Lace it's called. I got it from the Takapuna Art Supplies. But you could probably find it online and you could probably get it on Amazon, I would say. I've been using it recently. So, you know, I've got scraps all over my studio. But, you know, you go through seasons and you use stuff and then you use it up and then you find something else. And at the moment, this particular beautiful fibrous paper is getting well used. That is just gorgeous. See how you don't know what's going to be left until the end of the collage. <laughs> because anything can get covered along the way and you think you're going to keep it. And, you know, I went and painted that edge so nicely in the bronze too. But. 
I think that looks fabulous and that will dry more transparent. So what else is in my scrap bag? Ooh, I've got this, which is a different paper. Yeah. No? Yeah? No. Yeah? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to lighten it up a little bit. So it will dry very transparent. So do I want it there or there? I think up there. Righto. This is a different paper. It's called Beehive. I know that much because I found out what it was called when I was trying to find out what that was called. And it does come in like a whole full sheet of these incredible, beautifully fibrous circles, like a honeycomb pattern or a beehive pattern. It's amazing. You should look it up. Um, it does dry very transparent in the middle here. And then you just have that fabulous circle, which is great. Do I need another one? I don't know. Do I? Oh, man. <laughs> stop maybe i'll have a look in my scrap bag <laughs> no that's good that's going to get cut off the top that's just lightened it a bit because it was all just a little somber today a bit somber today what's going on not to worry that will get cut. i'll show you when it's dry how beautiful that looks and for now i think i might just stop there let all that dry and see where we're at so i just looked up and had a look over towards my scrap bag and my piles that are on my table and i'm liking that idea of putting a little cross in the middle there that one or maybe yeah because then that brings that directly across to there those circles are connecting with those circles these textures all work and colours work really well. That will dissolve into a beautiful fibrous pattern. And um, I think I will do that. Getting the shape right will be the hard thing. Does it matter if it's off centre? Eh, not to me. How does that look? That's not too bad. Maybe you'll leave it there and think about it. Right, so my beautiful collage is now dried and I trimmed the edges so you could see it better. And look, it's just beautiful. It's still a little moody. <laughs> But I'm figuring that's just where I am. You know, Christmas and all and the new year approaching. Yeah, maybe I am a little moody. Um, I'm loving it. The textures are beautiful. I love, love, love the colours. The prints are gorgeous. I have now a stack of still 100 other prints in my little yeah, storehouse of jelly prints so I can pull them out for different collages. This is dried now. You can see the beautiful fibrous textures of that paper, that Japanese paper. Now I know the name of it. It's fantastic. And this is the other piece of paper is the beehive. See how the inside piece of paper dissolves completely transparent. Oh, I love it. It's fascinating stuff. So that's that one there. That's really cool. You'll probably see it again. I like the way these colors coming through the circles. I like this half circle up here. I love my wallpaper and I love these textures and colors coming through here. I love this edge, this raw edge here with the bronze. This paper is one of my favorites at the moment. I'll probably cry when that finishes. Uh, these beautiful cross shapes from the impression plate look fabulous. I love this. This is gorgeous and my beautiful circle wallpaper shapes. Um, I'm pretty happy with the whole thing. It's very warm and exotic looking. And you know, 
I'm just feeling it. This is just how I'm feeling today. So I really hope you've enjoyed the whole process. Make sure you get yourself some wallpaper samples if you can. And if not, uh, make yourself some impression plates using a molding paste or texture paste or really... I keep calling it anything because you can use anything. I have tried quite a few different types and brands and as long as you're creating that three-dimensional form on a, a backing board, then you know, it's going to leave an impression on your gel plate. It's absolutely fantastic. Give it a try, make some beautiful prints, put a collage together and join me in my private Facebook group and show me what you create. I would so love to see that. So I hope you come and create with me again next week. I'll probably be doing something completely different because it'll be probably past the new year. Hip hooray. Let's be all hopeful. Next year is going to be better, right? <laughs> so I'll see you then. We'll be doing something fabulous, something creative and definitely with beautiful colors. Thanks for joining me. See you again next week. So if you enjoyed this video, show me the love, give me some thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel, maybe even leave me a comment and I'll see you again next time. Yeah.